welcome to the third episode of Voices, a year-long archival art initiative curated by Serendip Arts and the hashtag Collective, of which I'm a founder member. And the purpose is to investigate the creative present through discussions between artists and arts writers. I usually kickstart each episode with a small idea thrown up by the upcoming session. In the past, I've talked about relational aesthetics and the nature of conversations. Today, I'd just like to highlight the idea of the collective. We forget sometimes the real power in collective action. Historically, artists have explored the advantages of pooling resources and working as collectives for a long time. The jury of the Turner Prize, one of the best known prizes for the visual arts, for the first time ever, only shortlisted artist collectives this year. And interestingly, you know, the smallest of those art collectives is a cooking, is the cooking sections, which is just two people that relook systems that organize the world through food. But coming back to voices, it is a collective idea that sprang from Ravi, Namrata, Sarah, Abhin, Biju, and myself, and one that's still growing. Life as we knew it felt derailed in these uncertain times. Our hope is that we get back on track just a little by curating a series such as this and inviting artists to share their journeys within contexts set by the arts writers and curators. And as Ravi often points out, it is important to stress that Voices is a South Indian based platform. So to briefly introduce ourselves, Bangalore-based Ravi Kavale is a former industrialist, art collector, art supporter, and gallerist who set up Serendip Art as a gallery by appointment to showcase contemporary artworks. He has sponsored the Ananya Drishya program and is a curator with the Alliance Francaise de Bangaluru for the Young Talents program. And it's very apposite today that the other prong of the Voices team is a collective, the hashtag collective, which was formed by Biju Kuriakos, Abhin Chaudhary, Sarah Biju, and myself. We have strong individual practices, but come together to explore multidisciplinary artworks, site-specific installations, and initiatives such as Voices to create greater engagements for the public with art and the issues of our time. Before I ask Ravi to introduce tonight's wonderful speakers, a quick word about the program. We invite you to please post your questions and whom they're addressed to or directed at in the chat box, both in the Zoom and YouTube platforms, or even message me. After the main session between Kinetics and Ashrafi, we will try and answer as many as we can. Over to you now, Ravi. Thanks, uh, Parvati, and uh, welcome everyone to this third edition. Uh, it's going to be a very uh, exciting journey because we are featuring uh, nine artists in this collective that's been uh, about 13 years old now, based out of Chennai. They're all uh, very uh, uh, different art practices. Each one of them is pursuing. And uh, it varies from abstract work to sculpture to photography, video, and uh, multimedia. Uh, and the outcomes are varied uh, in terms of materials and the scale of their work. And uh, one interesting fact is that uh, they are all graduates of the Government College of Fine Arts, uh, one of the oldest institutions in India. It was uh, started in 1850. And uh, it has also been the focus of the Madras art movement of the 1960s, out of which emerged uh, Chola Mandal, uh, with uh, many eminent artists. And you know, so so it's it's great that uh, all these uh, nine artists are from the same college, passing out at different times, and uh, they've had a very exploratory approach to things. Uh, ideas shaped by time and the artist's experience in the field of art. So, you know, 
so and and uh, quickly uh, i will give you their names anish k r gurunathan govindan sharavanan parshuraman suresh kumar p dilip kumar keshavan umareshan selvaraj sunil shri yuvraj velu and yuvan bodhisattvar uh coming to ashrafi bagat she is our moderator and curator for the evening a uh, very eminent person she is an academic independent art historian art critic and curator she writes on modern and contemporary art in uh, magazines and journals and also does uh, monographs of eminent artists and uh, has written several uh, catalog essays for uh, artists um her uh, one of the main shows she did was she curated was at ngma bangalore which uh, which was about the artists who shaped the madras art movement apart from group shows in chennai delhi and bangalore so i hand it over now to ashrafi bagat without wasting any more time thank you ravi for that uh, introduction at the outset i should like to thank party who coerced me into taking up this and i'm happy that i did it and it was a good experience and journey with the nine artists as i went through with them uh, so this evening we will be hearing the voices of a collective the kinetics which uh, ravi has already explained and ravi i must thank you also serendip arts and also the members of the hashtag collective so moving on uh, this is a collective Uh, with nine artists and they have a shared art education from a very eminent colonial historical art institution and uh, surprisingly uh, their works have a thread of commonality which links them together and that is more in the way of a uh, craft processes so if i say craft processes then it is the materials and the process which perhaps has much to do with the pedagogy of the uh, institution and the curriculum as it was originally started nevertheless uh, not all of them are actually painting graduates uh, sunil is a graduate of uh, industrial design textile design and uh, sarvanan i think is uh, visual communication while the rest of them of course graduated in painting uh an important aspect or rather what is important about any artist is a struggle for an image a struggle which is also one of identity amongst others and it is this uh, you know which gives a synoptic vision of the experiential experiential reality which is around him this vision is the one which allows him to develop a language and this language is the one which gives him power and authority so if you are looking at all the nine artists and the works that they have created we find that there is a dialectic of material they coerce they tame and they transform ordinary mundane material into unique expressions and this they do it through their own uh, uh, rather they articulate it through their own philosophy their personal experiences or whether it is a perceptual empirical approach or that uh, you know they use uh, other means of creating their expressions so uh, before i hand it over to sunil and anish Uh, i would just want sunil and anish to give a little bit of their educational background to put the whole collective in perspective and as to you know what uh, what was their pedagogy about that makes them work in a craft like craftsmanship like manner so over to you sunil and anish okay thank you thank you so much ashish and good evening everyone and uh, thank you so much uh, uh ravi and parvati and follow back shafi so hope i am audible and clear right okay so 
here my responsibility is quite different because I'm going to talk about nine artists. <laughs> Every time uh, it is very special when I talk my, about myself, but uh, here my responsibility is different. So to get introduced with uh, kinetics, uh, this is like nine artists working together uh, from a from the same college background with uh, different uh, year backgrounds. Like they were from different years, like seniors, even juniors, and so sort of different age group. So we were nine, and I'll start introducing from one, one, one by one. So that would be easy for you to relate what we work and go with. So I'll introduce um, with a short videos um, for a minute. So I introduce myself. So I work uh, more on like materials and it meanings more of it, uh, how it get connected to the a metaphor, how it gives meaning to my work and all those things. So it is just naturally my work is more with nature and human and human interpretation, like how human take advantage of the nature or uh, how they uh, uh, eventually take advantages one by one. And uh, so material begins like a strong metaphor for me. So I use a lot of materials and uh, I try to engage with the meaning of the material as well. So it connect and relate everything to the viewer as well. So during uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, videos were taken during this pandemic where we were in separate isolation. So uh, those times where we were most alone, I was moving to my native and working upon. So, so you can understand from this that during the pandemic, how alone and how strong we are working on, on also. Yeah, next. Yeah, I introduced Kumaration. Uh, as Kumaration's discussions and his work talk more about like, the details he see every day, uh, apart from uh, apart from we forget to to see. Like uh, he is generally from an urban scenario where he lives in Chennai, brought up and born and lived in Chennai. So his material abilities strongly convey about what he see every day and which is not in the work. So he engage all the uh, all over the materials to uh, allow the wish uh, spectators to understand. Um, what are the small details he engage every day in everyday life? So uh, assume he's taking some photograph or seeing something, how the details of the paper or the layers and all those things. So he use mostly of paper and all those materials in his recent works. Yeah, going down to um, Guru Nadan. Guru Nadan engaged with a more of an abstract artist. Um, he engaged, um, as, as in a conversation, if it's, Guru, if it's with Guru Nadan, then he's like, he's, he's engaging more with abstract and he's in, uh, uh, experimenting with textures, how you work with the fabric and the pigments, how it, how it should go together. And so um, in single word, he's, he's saying, I'm learning, learning a uh, sensation of the abstraction only. And so, so he's meeting up with um, everyday accidents on how, how he had to work on and how you work on with the materials. And next, you can... Yeah, Saravanan Parashraman is from... Um, when he conveys about his work, it is more of he is coming from a strong uh, rural background from near to Tiruvannamalai, and his images. Uh, when we see the uh, upcoming slides, we can generally understand all the images were uh, part of the nature and he how we see patterns and the strong village visuals. And uh, the artist was using uh, strong uh, industrial materials as well as uh, like steel balls and all those materials, so we can easily convey that. But the, the thought process is um, all behind how he spent his childhood in the village and how he uh, look and relate to uh, the urban scenario as well as the rural content. 
So his, strong, his work strongly believes how he handled the material also. Yeah, Anish will be introducing the other artists. Anish, over to you. Yeah, so um, this is Yuvraj, uh, you know, uh, National Awadi. Um, and he explores uh, different type of like materials again. Uh, and he, his most of his works are mostly sculpture. Um, and uh, he explores like you know, uh, metal and wood a lot. Um, and also like the craft that, that, that's uh, pretty commendable. Um, and also he explored a lot of like you know, concepts um, such as you know, behavior of human you know, body, mind. Um, Uh, this is Suresh Kumar P. Um, this is actually the founder of the group, actually. Uh, and uh, uh, he, he's into abstraction, too. Um, he used to do a lot of like paintings and also figurative drawings. But right now, he's uh, more focused on the abstraction and using this, like, um, you know, uh, posters and colors, color papers to create his visuals. And he's more focused on the, um, you know, not representing anything and enjoying the process and being in that moment. Uh, this is uh, Dilip. Um, he does a lot of like figurative paintings uh, plus abstracts. Um, and uh, he's also more of like, sort of like, uh, you know, celebrating the body um, and uh, you know, being in the moment, being in the process, enjoying the process, and how to you know, create something very aesthetically pleasing uh, to the audience. Um, and he works with different medium too, you know, sculptures, but mostly, you know, uh, paintings, uh, you know, figurative and uh, you know, abstractions. Uh, so even Bodhisattva, um, his uh, in a main medium that he, he is doing right now, he's focusing his uh, paper um, and his works are like very intricate, um, shows a lot of different forms um, and abstractions. So he start with, uh, you know, basic forms and create like uh, stunning visuals and uh, his works are like, you know, different sizes, like a lot of them are like really huge. And uh, it gives a really good you know, visual impact and uh, aesthetically very pleasing. While he does that, he really uh, focuses on a lot of like you know political statements, very indirectly, and also like you know share his personal experience uh, you know about like you know human and nature or you know um, uh, yeah friendship, love, uh, you know all those uh, different aspects of life. Uh, yeah, myself, uh, Anish. So um, my works are mostly about my travel and the places that I'm, I'm uh, where I'm, and uh, like who am I interacting with. Um, um, and uh, I'm focusing right now more on uh, you know, paintings, videos, and photography. Um, sort of like creating a you know interesting experience for the uh, audience uh, viewers uh, while sort of like, you know, sharing, um, you know, certain things I experience in life. It could be very, something very literal, or it could be a little bit philosophical and conceptual. And you can see in this video, like a blend of video and where I'm taking the, uh, this inspirational source, sort of using that idea and also my, you know, the product, just the painting. So how it correlates. Yeah. Thank you, Anish. Ashrafi, yeah. yeah, if you can go with the question, anything? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, I do have questions. Mm. First and foremost, uh, you know, as you, uh, as I was going through the videos that you were showing, I find that uh, it's the material and the process which seems to be at the heart of all your nine artists. Uh, my question is that... Uh, how do you conceptualize? 
most of your works are a kind of an abstraction. So how do you conceptualize? And uh, is there a correspondence of material with the ideas that you work with? And I find that most of you working with your personal experiences, your personal philosophies, nature, etc. So how do you, you know, bring all these things uh, together to create a work of art that, you know, you have, uh, which may, all of you, nearly all of you have shown here? Okay. Um, uh, then talking about the materials, we were uh, College of Fine Arts and the Madras scenario is highly influenced with uh, industrial thoughts, industrial productions, and all those influences were generally strong. But when it comes to art, uh, 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 during our discussions, uh, how we concept us, it, it, everyone stand alone on their own thoughts and uh, they stick to their thoughts because that, that clearly shows some adamancies, uh, adamant towards their thoughts, then we conceive the materials. So, uh, as introduce material owning a material or owning an identity towards a material is is very uh, very identical uh, in the different scenarios. But um, now we were uh, in the, this generation. I feel everyone is open to the material thoughts, like on even a similar uh, uh, similar images, we can show differences, like in the same material, even from a watercolor. Understanding from a watercolor, we can show a different. Uh, experience to the viewer. The same way uh, we conceive the materials in a way like we hold back to the concepts and we uh, take the material uh, uh, the same way which work is required, the concepts or the ideology required into that. So Anish, you have any thought on that? Um, I think I think you sort of like, you know, uh, clearly explained and uh, I second what you said in the end, um, you know, sort of the, the concept decides the materials. Uh, most yeah. of the, yeah, most of the time, yeah. yeah. See, the process uh, I find is quite physically intensive and uh, time-consuming also. Yes. Is it uh, uh, very consciously done? Is it a cathartic process for you? Is it zen-like contemplation as you're working on it? I, I think uh, evidentially, because everyone is going to see this, which, uh, we are going to show something that's uh, how we started and how we are, what you are doing now. So it is evidentially show that there is a strong practice, which is taking like 14, 15 years, which is very evidential that uh, anyone working on a medium have the clear thought on like, what we are working on and uh, uh, it is about the practice actually. So uh, artists spending like 12 to 15 hours in the studio and so uh, the image just shows that I believe. Okay. Yeah. So are you going to carry on? Yeah. So, so I'll, uh, I'll start with uh, 2007 because uh, Little Claire Academy that time it was uh, a common platform after our academics. Like commonly everyone uh, who want to practice art choose the place because it is a common studio in the South where artists go there and they can pay their rents and they can use a little space of there. And where artists gather in the evenings and they will uh, discuss about art and uh, we uh, be engaged with the conversations and exhibitions around and so that is a common place after uh, for this artist this is a common place where we engage in Shiri. so this started in 2007 so Anish next slide we can go with slides So uh, usually we, we gather uh, gather where uh, LK is a uh, uh, common place. Yeah. So just to add to that, like Lalit Kala Academy is a you know studio in Chennai. Those who are not familiar with Lalit Kala Academy, uh, you know, so uh, that's like a good place for to get started. Actually, like after college, it's easy to uh, you know get a um, you know uh, admission there, and you can use the space and you know interact with other artists. So we kind of like, we also, um, you know, um, not just work, we spend really uh, a lot of time there, like 
interact, you know, um, just playing, you know, spending a lot of time, like until nine o'clock, nine thirty. Um, yeah, so this is the place actually we kind of like build the, you know, build the group. We live. <laughs> so. So during uh, the the inception of this kinetic group started in 2007 with a uh, founder member of like five artists there, with Suresh, Narayan, uh, Gurunathan, and Dilip, uh, and Yuvraj. So then it was, um, we were joining the group immediately with Anish and myself, and slowly Suresh was also there, another Suresh, which is, I mean, Suresh Kumar, yes. He's not in the group now, so, um, so, we were uh, uh, we are doing this show, and then the next show was we are able to do in Bangalore. So we'll be continuing the slides. Yeah, slides moving. While we're waiting for the slides, Ashrafi, maybe yeah. you could sort of, you know, uh, pose the question that you were planning to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now the. Oh, it's coming on. No, no. Uh, okay. Okay. So Anish will uh, discuss about the travel and shared experience. Where, uh, can I ask a few? Can I ask a question here? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, uh, seeing the collective space here of the artists at Lalit Kala Academy, the question that comes to my mind is whether you know Kainatic as a collective has any commonality with the Chola Mandal Artist Village, which is both a collective, I would say, as well as a community of artists living together. Do you think that there is some kind of, uh, you know, a similar sharing which has happened here with the kinetics at Lalit Kala Academy in the yes. space there? Yes, maybe initially also this comes as a reference because Cholamandal is an initial thing and it is going well. And believe, uh, we believe the ideology is uh, uh, quite different because we are uh, not forming any residencies or common platform to work together because... Uh, we stick to the studio practices. So I think it is only about the work. Uh, so uh, living as a community or uh, transforming the, any space spaces into a, a living space or common living space. Um, we never, uh, it never happened with us because we stick to our works and we share thoughts and we go with that. So when you were working here, Yes. Either, you know, as a silent spectator or as an, you know, active participant, I could see that there is a lot of camaraderie which is going on there, where each one, each of the artists is helping out the other. Uh, do you think that in the process, that while you help another artist in, you know, visualizing his ideas come alive with material process, etc., did it uh, in some way subconsciously affect your works and instigate or inspire to also think in a similar way, but in a different, in a different direction. Yes, yes, actually it is there. Uh, since it's a very, uh, we handle this as a very casual platform, the criticizings were a larger amount than uh, accepting some work or uh, uh, getting inspired because the criticizing point is, uh, or it is a kind of reviewing immediately. So one, uh, if it's, it's, if it's going to be a show, then it is, Absolutely, absolutely, and in the curational, like, so what goes with what is already decided. So I mean, like, maybe a within, it takes a year, year back of one year. So we are doing a show in um, 
uh, Bangalore, we were planning for the show at least like one and a half year. Like it's like 18 months. So we were pre-booking that and we were even, we have the floor plans of the gallery and we are discussing what size fit in the gallery and uh, what are the things we have to plan it up. At the, at the same level, when we discuss about this formal engagements, we discuss about this uh, criticizing very lightly. So, so that I think that is the strongest point which we handle uh, till today because there is always... No, 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 Sunil, how much were you all, uh, you know, influenced by other artists working? Yes, the critical uh, would, uh, criticism would have been there. Yes. Okay. But uh, how much were you all inspired, you know, to think differently when you saw the artists, uh, you know, when you were helping out artists? Like uh, Shiva and his Ambari project, I think, what I saw there. Yes, yes. It is inspiring because uh, sometimes, uh, uh, personally, I believe if, if I'm engaged with another artist, so rather, uh, when I'm getting inspired at the same time, I can... Uh, create a boundaries where I can stop by inspiration because already I'm engaging, physically engaging with the work itself. Shiva is working on Nambari, so I will be physically engaging on that work. So the inspiration is already done with the work. So the same time, so I'm physically engaging my uh, myself to that work. So, so from the inspiration, physically, I'm not do going to uh, inspire that, but by, by subconscious, we have a lot of influence because it is not only the seven artists in the group. I will. I would say like the every person or every artist we meet together and discuss together. We have all that inner influence, and uh, uh, it is kind of uh, it creates the culture. Actually, we have a strong influence on each other, and it may vary from person to person. I believe. Okay. Yeah. So your travels. You just I, ran through the slides. I, yeah. Yeah. So I just want to know that uh, how important traveling was for you. How many trips have you all taken? And uh, after the trips, did you all decide that you need to have a show in order to put forth, you know, your inspiration of the place where you had been? Uh, uh, no. Has that been the main aim or, you know, uh, it's just travel? Uh, to see a place and of course at the same time subconsciously absorb much of the topography or the landscape which is around it. Did you all consciously travel so that you know you could have a exhibition later on? Um, not, I, I, I won't say like that. I would say more like it's for fun. That's the, that's the primary thing, of course. Then, uh, then everything comes with it. Like you said, the experience uh, comes with it, you know. Um, and uh, also, like you know, we 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 share. We spend you know twenty four hours together, right? Uh, when, when we are like, traveling, so we talk about a lot of things. Um, and definitely, the places and the conversation and the people, everything kind of inspires us. Um, so we don't do it deliberately. Oh, this this is a plan. We're gonna travel and we're gonna do a show. We don't do that. But we'll kind of like you know, it's part of our life right now. So we 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 travel a couple of times a year, uh, even though uh, people are in different places, we try to manage to find the time and we, we, we travel to them, so. So what was your aim here in juxtaposing your works here, Ramesh? They're beautiful watercolors, very refreshing. Yeah, just to show that, thank you. Just to show that, uh, you know, um, for example, you can see in this photo, Guru is, you know, uh, doing a sketch, you know, um, looking at a mountain, doing a sketch. So, so, um, just sort of like show like you know, how the track, uh, the travel directly sort of like inspire you. But some people, for example, Kumarajan might do something else. You know, he might take some texture or some sort of like, you know, idea, a story from the place and he will convey that uh, to a, you know, different, uh, you know, medium, um, very indirectly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Sunil, let's start with the Bangalore. Uh, show first show in Bangalore yeah so tracing uh, new horizon as uh, is an idea again uh, we were uh, reforming the groups I myself and Anish and Suresh were adding to that group so this is the second show of the kinetics and we are planning it for like um, Chitrakala Parshit and um, Anish you can move on to the next slide so uh, so suddenly we were thinking of all the artist connections and um, 
we were uh, new to the platform and under to the blank floor and as a collective so we plan a lot of things like uh, pre scheduling the gallery we have the measurements blueprints and how we move with the installations and extremely we were we believe we were working with a um, uh, lot of new media ideas were uh, extensively like uh, with a lot of material so these are the works we were uh, trying so you can see the slides with the names and so everyone have their own uh, own uh, uh, practices and as well as it is i i believe this is one of the best inter curational show where we are trying to so we were introduced to even uh, um subra and uh, uh, all the artists are there and there's a, the young artists were accompanying us and we were sharing thoughts and uh, we met revi and uh, we start uh, discussing and all those things happens in this uh, rising new horizon and uh, this show went like uh, we were planning it for like 10 to 15 days it was a long show and and we received uh, the review was extremely good we have nice articles and write ups and all, all thing happening so this was a breakthrough actually the show uh, happened in a was a breakthrough and we followed up with few on sponsor show in bangalore anish will be discussing on blue space yeah so just we got another opportunity from bangalore uh blue space so they they offered their space to showcase our work and again we continue to make connections um you know different people in bangalore and also reconnect with the people that we met before um yeah so just sort of uh, you know making connection more connections and a stronger connection to the you know art community uh, and you know art related people in bangalore and uh, followed by that you know we got another opportunity in chennai uh, to showcase our work during art chennai uh in at parvati gallery um you know we sort of continue to explore you know more mediums and more you know dimensions in our work um yeah so um um again you know you know continuing to make connection with the artists and you know um, in chennai um yes no do you want to leave yeah yeah again uh Uh, after 2000 uh, after a 2 3 uh, years break when we were doing uh, at sri parvati we were planning to do a show in chitrakala parishad after we met to uh, suresh sharan he was offering us a show in shandi road where we had the inauguration there and then we uh, we uh, shifted the show to bang uh, chitrakala parishad so this in shandi road we exhibited only the small format works so we planned it for 3 days and we exhibited in 2012 and it was only for the three days and the continuing exhibition happened in chitra club uh next slide so during this time we uh, there are other artists also working uh, ganesh selvaraj this is ganesh selvaraj's work and they are also joined us to work together and uh, we did a show a show in cholamandal during 2012 also uh, Uh, it's called sign so we were including all the junior artists so who were there and like working in lk background so there were i believe 14 artists were there so including the other artists who was working with us and we were doing the show and after the 2012 we were working more with uh, more with again uh, the, the mediums and the materials get more stronger and we were working on uh, working on to like um it is more a space oriented work this was a show in 2014 and uh, uh i feel uh, everyone everyone start changing their work after continuing like um five six years change is always there but uh the, they were everyone is taking uh, taking the material very strongly and we were these times 2014 we were moving to individual studios so 2013 the lk was uh, shutting down for a period of 2 years or something so we are moving to our individual studios so the uh, the working connection like common platform get reduced and we begins we begin work individually so this is during 2008 after that we were working with art talks so in this show dilip were joining us again so after 2009 he was joining back to the group and suresh was not there suresh kumar s yes, was not there suresh kumar p was there so we are more moving on to the shows with uh, art house and 
Veda during 2000, 2008 and 2019. Um, here also we were engaging with um, uh, more of material and political connections, how we discuss things in a stronger way. And Uh, okay, uh, just one question. Yes. Uh, Suresh, you mentioned that uh, change is very much there, a part of your entire journey for all of you. Yes. And uh, so if that means change is very much at the heart of all of your works. Yes. Uh, basically, it was such a visual delight, you know, when you went through all those slides and all of your works. Uh, most of you work on a very large scale. And it's like, you know, uh, what is it which uh, drives some of you to work on such a large scale while, you know, uh, others do not work on such a large scale? It's like, uh, you know, uh, are you trying to create a spectacle or is it to attract attention or is it uh, the natural working method, you know, which allows them to create in such a way, like you ones works and... Uh, uh, uh -huh. The last point, I agree with the last point because uh, material allows us to work on the scales because uh, even Anish and myself, I was maybe working with the smaller scales and uh, Yuvan and uh, uh, Kumarishan, Saravan and Suresh Kumar were working on the large scales. So I believe the work demands that let uh, the choice of the medium and how they are conceptualizing. So again, to... Uh, um, uh, again, it, it's about a personal choice also I think, when, it, when we uh, talk about that. And, and also, like, you know, just to add to that, uh, sort of creating an uh, experience to the audience. Uh, some yeah. works need to be bigger so they can actually experience it well. And for example, if I take my works, um, when I talk about, when I want to share uh, an idea about a place, I would do smaller ones, but a collage of, like, I mean, an uh, installation of, like, 30 paintings, and every painting will have different, you know, elements of that place. So the, when the viewers can consume together, but also separately. So, so it, it depends on the concept and what I want to share. So uh, here's a video. This is our last, um, um, actually, uh, you know, physical show, which, which we did in Veda Gallery. And um, uh, it has like, a, you can see the glimpses of like, you know, uh, how we work together, how we installing the, you know, work. And also you can see the size, um, it will give you a context of the size uh, and stuff. So. Uh, okay, now, uh, uh, Yuvraj is a sculptor and yeah. he works uh, three-dimensionally. Yes. Uh, how do you think, uh, you know, his three-dimensionality of working in sculpture in some way has any commonality with your two-dimensional two-dimensionality of your, uh, you know, decorative space, which is, yeah, uh, mainly two-dimensional. Uh, do you think that uh, it is his materials or his three-dimensionality, you know, which uh, gives a kind of a commonality? Because materials, I feel, is, I see rather, is uh, extremely important for all of you. And mm. that is what, you know, defines each of the artists here also in the way, you know, uh, you have engaged with the materials and articulated your concept. So how do you think, you know, Yuvraj will, he's the only sculptor. Of course, Dilip does a little bit of sculpture. But he's the only sculptor who uses, uh, you know, uh, contemporary materials. And of course, he has a very strong uh, concept also in his works. Yeah, um, I, I, I understand the question in a way, like uh, in 2007, uh, when we were in the group, when we were doing the exhibitions, uh, Yuvarad's work was extremely three-dimensional. At the same time, Saranan's work was um, three-dimensional because he was working on um, the steel balls and all this. Uh, uh, exhibition uh, works. So uh, I believe uh, uh, Yuvraj from that time he have his own uh, style of work and he he have a complete influence on the uh, others also because uh, since it's three dimensional it have this material uh, contact every time like how as an artist we how we experience with that particular work or something like that. So. I should agree there is inner in in influence every time and, and it allows the artist to explore also, I believe. 
Okay. Uh, now, uh, like most of you, if you are at least the four artists, uh, that is uh, uh, Yuvan, uh, Kumaresan, yes. Sunil, uh, and a few others. Uh, you know, you all work like, uh, your works are like art of the craft and craft of the art. Uh, what is it which drives you to work like a craftsman with an you know artistic sensibility? Is it the pedagogy of the art institution? You know where there were a lot of uh, crafts workshop and you know where uh, uh, taking one of the craft subject was mandatory. You know during the 1960s. Do you think that uh, had any uh, uh, kind of an influence on all of you uh, working together here in this? Um, can I, can I go? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like, you know, um, I think every one of them in the group sort of, uh, believes in the, you know, the, the visual, the quality of the visual and how, um, you know, the audience will interact with the visual. So the details, you know, that, that matter, that matter all the time. So I think, um, like you said, in all of the work, you can see that like, you know, uh, intricate or like, you know, the, the, the details, the craft, whatever you, know, you mentioned. So I feel like, so we all of them in the group, uh, I think we believe that like, you know, the, the visual, that's the first point where the audience interact, right? So, so that, that, that's really important. Then, then through that, you sort of like, uh, you know, go to the concept uh, and uh, understand the different dimensions of the you know, piece. But the first thing is visual, right? So that's the, that's the one thing you see first. So you, then you go into that, into that. So. Do you want to add anything similar to that? Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to know that uh, as, uh, as a collective, the curation is done by you or have your shows been curated by anybody? Yes. Uh, actually, uh, first show on Praising New Horizon was curated by Giridhar uh, Kastnik. He was, he was on the image and uh, during 2007, so uh, that is uh, that is he is coming down to Chennai and see all the works, and we are having a long conversation, so one to one, everything, and it went clearly as a curational process. Then, sort of, we we, we were working on non uh, on inter curational, like as I mentioned before, we discuss each other uh, um, on all all of the particular of the work, and then. We, we do as a collective. Uh, we haven't uh, curated after that because we haven't included any curator after that. And Veda, show, Veda yeah. show was, uh, Ganesh Silveraj was um, curating. So he is actually, uh, he know our work, uh, like what the language we are creating is, he is very close to the work and he know everyone's work. And so there was not uh, anything uh, as a formal discussions, but uh, the works we work together uh, with Ganesh is like uh, he have a clear understanding what work with what and uh, we discuss in those factors. So it's a, it is an artistic curation because it's it's not with an external understanding. It is it's very not a conceptual one. Yes, it's not a concept. Con uh, I think as a collective, it's impossible to have anybody curating your show. <laughs> because you know it's so diverse it is so different and uh, uh, though there is uh, basically an inherent uh, uh, thread of connectivity with all of your works uh, also a common philosophy you know uh, as I was uh, uh, reading and analyzing your works that is what I found uh, because there is a process there is a change there is metamorphosis there is a nature which is involved and transformations, you know, trans, uh, transitory moments as, uh, you know, P. Suresh works with his abstracts. So, and it is there in nearly all of your works, like Kumaresan's, you know, layerings, which yeah. he says are the layerings of his own body or the layerings that you see in nature around. In that way, I think uh, it's impossible to have any curator curating the show. That's what, you know, uh, I feel about it as a curator. I wouldn't know, you know, how to curate a show like that. Uh, but the thing is that each one of you will know exactly what goes into it. So this is just, uh, you know. Yeah, actually, I, I uh, 
even we did the uh, online curation uh, which i have to mention uh, rega samir was uh, uh, doing the vastera which is sweden show which was completely online so the discussions were happening we share works like this and we are discussing with all the artists and rega samir was discussing on all the, all the artists so i believe uh, conceptualizing is happening and and it, it is happening but uh not as a very strong uh curation like nothing happen uh like physically uh very strong which is getting work to the to the areas like how to uh how to be uh what is it? Uh, no i, I feel know. each one of you is an artist curator yes you know best you know <laughs> yeah. what has to go into it yeah, we exactly. allow the evolutions we allow yeah, the exactly. evolutions with one and so uh, when you get invited are you invited as a collective or one of you you know get an invitation I, and then uh, you know you all go into it as a uh, no for the group till then uh, till today we get as a collective invite because uh, some sort of energy is there as a collective and we have been invited as a collective like so it. you are internationally you know uh, as a collective uh, to be known Sweden, as a <laughs> show as a collective full collective show and i have to mention we have a show coming up on september 17 that's at veda veda gallery it's a collective again kinetics let's do it. okay uh, as a collective uh, both of you uh, kinetic as a collective how do you think you are going to carry it forward and uh, you know you have plans of uh, intervening uh, i mean uh, bringing uh, new methods of working bringing this to the notice of many of the younger artists and also changing the perception of how the audience look at the work how do you think you know you can bring this about because chennai even today is a stranglehold of dance and music and uh, you know visual arts uh, has to be really pushed into that space so how do you think as a collective because you are also changing your name now to kinetics foundation of uh, chennai of madras a kinetic foundation of madras Uh, which means that you know it's also becoming more educational you're opening up to you know uh, also helping many younger artists yes. find their voices find a platform like the way you know you had uh, nobody to help you but collectively you were able to do it so as a collective now what are your plans for the future uh, so i think uh, so we have we just like you know, registered our uh, foundation in chennai so that's one step you know and sort of like um and we want to sort of uh, you know introduce this in our show uh in that's happening on veda um and uh, we have a lot of plans which is like you know like like you, you mentioned some of those that like you know um, artist residencies uh, and uh, curate shows and support uh, you know um, uh, younger generation who are coming out of the college sort of like you know creating a platform for them um all those things Uh, we don't have a solid path, plan yet since you know we are in a you know, unpredictable situation like you know in the pandemic but i think we will say once we did the show once we announce it you know officially in the in the show uh then we will probably you know uh see how 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 this situation you know and then sort of like make plans according to that so how did the pandemic uh, help you uh, did it help you to maintain some kind of a connectivity or you were all uh, kind of isolated working uh, you know independently wherever you were yeah. did it really impact your creativity uh, not the creativity in a positive way yes. not a negative way yeah no actually uh, we were isolated for a uh, few times uh, within a, like 6 uh, months to 8 months totally isolated but um, the times like uh, as artists like they adapt so i believe everyone have their uh, have this sort of work and they working each other and they are sharing thoughts and we are even planning shows so uh, neither we said that the invisibles are making us more stronger <laughs> so so is this veda show a result of your pandemic isolation uh sort of because the show is planned during like 2020 and uh, march uh march oh. april time mm-hmm. so we were keep postponing it so it is postponed for like three four times and now it's happening so it is sort of a discussion happening 
Okay, thank you, Sunil and Anish. It was such a pleasure talking to you. So over to you, uh, Parvati and Ravi. Thank you. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Ashrafi, for setting it in such an amazing you know, context. And um, I will start with asking the questions that have been posted in the chat group. So first question is from Prati Prabhuram, and she asks the artists, do you work on one piece at a time or is it multiple working modes of ideas, thoughts, and inspirations that keep flowing? Either or both of you could take the question. Okay, I'll answer it. So again, uh, it depends on the artist. I personally, I work with multiple pieces. So I start like uh, five, six works at a time and I finish one by one. I engage with all of the books. So even uh, I, then I have to tell one, every one of the artists because I, I think half of the artists were, most of the artists were finishing the work one by one. So they finished the one work and then they, they will continue to the work. So even I believe Anish, Anish must be working with multiple works. Yeah, because like when you do, uh, you know, when you're doing a project, which is, it takes like maybe a, uh, you know, a month or two months of taking photos of a place. Um, you know, why do you do that? You go out on a weekend and take photos, but during the week you, you work on other things. You know, I would, I would say the same thing, for example, for you and or, or Sarawan. Like, you know, there are a lot of like sticking and waiting to, to dry in all the physical, you know, practical things. So it depends what they're working on. I, I, I've seen people working, uh, you know, multiple pieces at the same time. Uh, there is another question from Lena Vincent, who is a curator. And, you know, uh, in a sense, Ashrafi has already sort of answered a part of this question on her own, because I was going to post it to her as well. But she sort of wanted wants to know, she's interested in understanding what is the manner in which you interact or work with curators as a collective? That's one part. And the other part is, how do you handle the dynamics when individual artists receive opportunities or recognition? Is it, you know, something that you have private and personal practices as well as come together? Or is the collective your primary thrust? So a question in two parts, I think first, the issue of curation, which in a sense, Ashrafi has already touched on, but you know, yes. would you like to elaborate a bit? Yeah, it is, um, it is about, uh, we, we do our own uh, curation and it is artists himself uh, uh, work on the curational part. But um, uh, every time, uh, uh, on, on our group, we expect uh, to be curated because it, it uh, explains a lot with the group because the group, now the group have a age, I believe, because it's, it's not a new group or something. So uh, once the curator or, uh, or the artist interaction happens, I think it may expand a lot like this discussions because I believe now Ashrafi have an inquiry, then the artists have the answer or trying to get the answer. So the strong inquiry has to happen a lot because it is a necessary thing which, is, which has to happen a lot because the artists themselves doing shows and continuing as a group. Uh, I feel like uh, this, this may, gay, uh, may go monochromatic also from the perspective of others. So if it's curators interviewing and discussing and taking it uh, to the levels, then it would be very interesting, I believe. And the second answer, um, uh, what was the question? Could you make it? No, if you're sort of invited individually, uh, yeah. how do you deal yeah. with that? Actually, that is happening within our group because we uh, two, three artists were already with the galleries. So they get uh, prior uh, notice, they give prior notice over the contract and they will, they will be participating in the shows, kinetic shows. So when they are making the contract, we, we make it clear that we will be exhibiting in Canada. So there are artists who are uh, contract with the galleries and they, they are exhibiting. Thank you. The artist Shantamani asks, and there is another question sent to me as well about the isolation. So at one level, it's to Ashrafi as well as to the artists saying, how did isolation affect you? I mean, Ashrafi, what did you do during the isolation that was 
that made you, um, you know, engage with the creative uh, arena? And as artists, how did isolation affect you? So Ashrafi first, and then both of you, please. Uh, I won't call it an isolation. I thought it was just my life going on as usual. Only thing is I was restricted from socializing and going out. But yes, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, I found that uh, there were people, there were many, you know, uh, friends and acquaintances and my students uh, <clears throat> who realized that uh, why not they, you know, why not I, you know, conduct online classes? So that gave me an opportunity, and uh, you know, I explored different aspects of art history and gave a small module, you know, courses, which I uh, found was very satisfying and which really helped me because it helped me to maintain my sanity with the, you know, absolute silence which was around, except the birds chirping, etc. Uh, so that helped me, uh, you know, in my reading, in my research. And of course, uh, you know, I had my writing, which uh, went simultaneously on. So uh, for me, it was actually a period of also creative introspection in many ways. Nish, can you say something? Artists, what, do you, what did the pandemic and the you know, enforced isolation mean for you as a collective and as individual artists? Um, collective, I would say, um, you know, we, we were actually pretty busy actually doing, you know, when the uh, pandemic started, the first few months was, you know, nothing happening, trying to understand the situation. So personally, I was actually had a lot of pending projects to do. So I was doing that. And then, um, you know, then connecting with um, um, artists over phone, you know, WhatsApp group chat, uh, all those things. Then we um, uh, ended up actually working on, uh, the, you know, Sunil mentioned the curator, Rekha Samir, I think she's here today. Uh, so sort of like she reached out to us and we were like you know, working on an online show uh, in Sweden. Then we have another like you know, show we did in, uh, in India that's also online, like Mojarto. So we are trying to like, you know, so preparing all those things. So I feel like I was very productive and very busy during the time. Uh, and of course, to you know, see what's happening outside, which which is very sa sad and sort of heartbreaking. You know what's happening to you know the people around, and uh, even your like you know, extended family and you know, relatives, which is uh, pretty hard. But in terms of like isolation and my space during the pandemic, I feel like pretty engaging uh, and uh, you know productive and busy. Sunil. Yeah. Um, I was struggling for a little time. I, I could say because. I have a two-year-old kid, so I was isolated. So, so from that time, and I struggle with materials, and I, I, have, I don't have enough uh, resources to go around to work. So my artistic life was uh, like a bit stagnant for some time. So slowly then, uh, it takes some time to get out of that. So I believe like at least six months, and then I realized and then even moved to my native Nagarkovil and um, there I start working again. So that was like I, I can remember a lot of things like it's like kind of a migration like, um, because I was locked in my flat and so I was struggling because only of my kids. So then I slowly recovered and I start working and that time that we are doing the show in Sweden. So quickly uh, as soon as I quickly recovered and I start working on it. So, but it teaches me a lot. So, yeah, it's an experience. <laughs> yes, there is a question too about artist block. How do you handle it? And I think a sort of small corollary to that would be, did you face that in the pandemic when things stopped? You know, did that sort of bring on an artist block? And if so, I mean, not just, you know, both of you, when you've sort of talked among the other artists of kinetics, did any of them share any experience such as that? Well, I believe this is a long relationship <laughs> with <laughs> everyone. So uh, there is, uh, we don't face any blocks because I believe we were meeting each other after a year. And we were, I haven't met any shit. So the, but we were doing something together. So we, we should not say it's a block. We are opening up with all new ways and going with it. 
Yes, mm-hmm. sort of adapt, you know, uh, <laughs> adapt to the situation and just like, you know, move forward. Um, it's, it's not even like intentionally you are doing it, it just happens, you know, um, with, with the energy. I think that it could be a, a very much factor. Um, another very interesting question, uh, which says that it's visible that this is a male only group. So. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. so the question that's being posed is was this an organic uh was this an organic process or was it a conscious decision and also is this something that's likely to change change <laughs> yeah <laughs> the problem with it is we were traveling so as we show the slides uh, it it comes with the traveling so the, I think the problem rises there because there were many artists working in LK also that time when we were discussing all to the artists who are parallelly working to LK. But they may not um, accompanying us for travel or they may not, that's their personal choice. And slowly uh, this get dominant, you know, like practically we were like moving around together. So that must be restricting and discussions were very uh, monochromatic then. We were traveling and we were discussing. So obviously this happened very naturally and might be of the region or anything like that, but not intentional. It is, uh, it is not intentional. Anish, Anish yeah. you have something to say on that? Yes, yes. Anish, because so I, was, I, I was just saying that like you know, what uh, Parvati was saying, it's very organic actually. <laughs> and, uh, like, we never sort of thought there's no intentional plan. It just like it you know, happens, and uh, like I don't even remember like when I when I started thinking about the group. You know, it just happened just like that. So there's nothing, no uh, um, intention. Are there any specific <laughs> questions you would like to ask uh, Ashrafi, yeah. Anish, or Sunil? Yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a wonderful uh, presentation and uh, exchange of views. The visuals have been uh, uh, really uh, excellent, and you know, so many diverse things. And uh, you know, I must I must point out that uh, in two thousand seven or eight, when I met them uh, here in Bangalore, this this is one of the works I picked up. What you see at the back, the steel ball work That's of uh, yeah, Sharavan and Parshuraman, and uh, so I still have fond memories of that uh, show. Um, yeah, see, um, I, I, I want to come back to what Ashrafi uh, uh, asked about, you know, young artists coming up in the Chennai area and uh, how you guys are supporting them, uh, you know, because uh, I think it's important for uh, uh, all, your, all of you to come together and uh, try to lend a helping hand, especially in today's uh, scenario. And, uh, you know, do you, if you have any specific plans and you need any support, you know, uh, I think we should work on that and, and try and get the public involved. How do you get the public involved in Chennai? Is there support? Is there, uh, you know? And uh, coming back to Anish, because Anish uh, is based in Bangladesh. He teaches with the American school there. And uh, I want to know from Anish whether uh, any, what, what is happening out there in Bangladesh uh, with reference to visual art? And is there any chance of collaboration with Indian galleries or groups, you know? Yeah, uh, I would say the, the art scene is pretty active here. Um, and, uh, you know, like Dhaka Summit, it's sort of similar to, you know, uh, Indian Art Summit, Art Fair. Uh, and also there's like, you know, uh, like a like a photography, like a you know, group, you know, uh, here. So they do art shows and stuff like that. And definitely there are like, you know, I remember um, the last uh, Dhaka Art Summit, there are like many artists from outside, from in some artists from India, some artists from, you know, um, outside. I can't remember the names right now. Uh, they were like presenting their work here. And also like culturally very, very rich here. And uh, they do a lot of like, you know, if, if you know the Lit Festival, you know, you can see a lot of celebrities coming, like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. writers, artists, actors, you know, come to Dhaka and uh, they will be in the panel interacting with the artists and the writers here. So I think definitely it's a possibility, but right now the whole situation, the pandemic situation, Dhaka is kind of with India, I guess, sort of recovering slowly. Um, and uh, I would say definitely there are a possibility to collaborate and, you know, bring okay. people in and 
you know, have people from here to in India. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. That was great. Uh, Ashrafi, Sunil, Anish, do you have any concluding remarks that you would like to give? Yeah. Ashrafi. Yeah. yeah. Please, ma'am, you can. After Ashrafi, yeah. Oh, you are asking me to jump? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, for me, it was, uh, it was a very good experience. Uh, and it was nice interacting with both Sunil and Anish. Uh, both of them were very articulate and uh, it helped me considerably. Uh, also in looking at their works and how they were able to, you know, carry forth. And uh, so we used to have a lot of discussions. So in a way, I would say a very good experience. And I just love each and every one of their works. They are so different. They are so distinct. And... Uh, sheer visual delight in every way and what i really love about their works is their process because you know i have seen uh, i have visited their studios and seen them working and uh, how well their materials you know corresponded also with their ideas and their various philosophies so i will say thank you very much it was such a wonderful experience uh, uh, you know, talking to both of you and uh, knowing the works of the collective as such. And of course, you know, the platform voices for giving me this opportunity, which I really enjoyed it, which I thought I would, uh, I was not capable of doing it. But uh, so that's another side now that I have discovered for myself. So thank you very much, Parvati especially, and of course, Ravi and the members of the Hashtag Collective. Yeah. So now? Yeah. So I could start with Ravi. On a bad day, uh, Ravi was calling me with a lot of hope. <laughs> so, I mean, so just completely a bad day. So I was just keeping the phone silent. I was sitting somewhere and Ravi was calling me. And so from then things start pitching up. So, and it was a long discussion, many, many discussions and then it's directed to Parvati and Saira, the hashtag collectives, and we have a lot of discussions. And then to Ashrafi, ma'am, even with Ashrafi, and we have a lot of uh, discussions on this. And from then, uh, it makes us very alive. As an artist, you know, like discussing each other, connecting through phones. And um, it, those were the happy times where uh, we conversing on a purpose. So the purpose is like uh, what we are doing now. And I mean this purpose. So. So it is very engaging, like for the, I mean, like for the three months and it was, I'm, I'm very happy and we have started this initiative and uh, hashtag collectives or uh, being in collective again to happy to see us collectives and <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much. And Parvati and especially Parvati and Saira and, and Ashrafi ma'am, we were uh, discussing on the slides, walls and it's like the group again. She was discussing every time on the shows where there was someone to discuss about the literature and how we connect the work and more with the verbal connections. So it was strongly engaging the artists uh, to another level. So I thank Ashwima. And thank you so much, one and all, and to all the audience here patiently uh, looking after our work. And, <laughs> and Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anish, would you like um, to add something? Um, yeah, first of all, I want to say, I want to apologize because there was some uh, technical error when I was presenting in the beginning. So sorry about that. Um, and like, I, like Sunil said, um, you know, uh, great uh, platform and great initiative from your side. And, uh, you know, thanks, uh, you know, Ravi, Parvati, and, you know, backstage, Saira, Namrata, uh, you know, everyone who's like, you know, uh, made this happen and, uh, uh, you know, and collaborating with like you know uh, Ashwari, that, that's an, that's a good experience. And uh, she asked certain questions which we never thought about. Thought about so you know sort of like to, which helps us to sort of move or explore in different like you know, areas, which was you know sort of uh, I would say interesting and helpful for us. Um, and um, yeah, and thanks for the audience. Excellent like said, yeah, thanks for being patient and uh, you know <laughs> heard us talking. Uh, and hope things made you know sense. Um, and hope you get late with the you know what we talked and uh, the slides, you know, hope you could relate with that. And 
yeah and uh, again if you are in chennai please come and see the show uh, on september 17th at uh, veda gallery yeah um well you know it's been such a wonderful evening and it's been very thought provoking i mean there's been you know a sheer visual delight of images and it's been you know a feast for the eyes and also a feast for the mind i you know i think if i take away a phrase it's probably what ashrafi said about the struggle for an image and that's you know that's what sort of drives us you know however conceptual abstract realist three dimensional you are you know it's that it's that struggle to get to focus that concept and its realization and to come with a form that is you know she calls it image but i know she means it in that larger sense of of bringing you know that nebulous thing of concept idea investigation research emotion sentiment to bring it all together to the artwork and that is you know i think it encapsulates what we all do as artists and i think it's it's a running thread through the work of kinetics that you work in this wonderful wonderful amazing array of forms and materials and then there is this which brings it together so thank you for that extremely generous sharing um you know for on making and materials and what it means to work as a collective it's not it's got great wonderful pluses but yes as we've discovered you know there is sort of you have to cope with the demands of many and i have to personally just add my delight and deep appreciation that my very inspirational former teacher ashrafi well i shouldn't say former <laughs> continuing teacher was part of today's program so from all of us at voices ravi who is the driving force and keeps us all honest namrata sarah abin biju and myself a huge thank you to each and every one of you and to the audience as anish said you know you're there you're participating actively patiently in this collective exchange of ideas and coming together to hear the artists voices voices will return with episode 4 on october 1 you tune in until then as sort of become you know almost standard and happy to say this stay safe keep the conversation going